In this lecture, we will be discussing some concepts fundamental to pharmacokinetics. Let's first define some terms. Half-life is the time taken for an exponential process to reach 50% of completion. Time constant is the time taken for an exponential process to reach completion had the initial rate of change continued. Rate constant is the proportion of the process completed per unit time had the initial rate of change continued. Clearance is the volume of plasma which is depleted of drug per unit time. Volume of distribution is the volume into which a drug appears to disperse. These are some equations which you may find useful. I've put them together here uh, for your reference. Let's start with volume of distribution. This can be defined simply as the volume into which a drug appears to disperse, the key word being appears. For example, propofol has a very large volume of distribution, about 4 litres per kilogram body weight, or almost 300 litres for a normal sized adult. That is clearly well in excess of the volume of the average adult. Let's apply this concept. Let's say we wish to induce a patient using propofol and our desired plasma concentration is 6 micrograms per mil. We know that propofol's volume of distribution is 4 litres per kilogram. We also know from high school chemistry that concentration equals amount over volume. If we rearrange that equation and punch in the relevant numbers, we will calculate that the required loading dose of propofol is almost 170 millilitres. Right? No. Obviously wrong. The reason that answer is wrong is that there is more than one type of volume of distribution. Many drugs are said to have a, a central volume of distribution. For propofol, this is in the order of 0.3 to 0.6 litres per kilogram, or somewhere between 2 and 4 litres. If we use those numbers, we arrive at the, the much more reasonable figure of 19 millilitres. And as we all know, the dose of any drug is one vial, so it must be right. The next topic is half-life. I would define half-life as the time taken for an exponential process to reach 50% of completion. Here I am fussy about the definition because, first of all, half-life does not always refer to a substance. It does not always refer to something being eliminated. For instance, a half-life can be used to describe the process of inhalational anaesthetic wash-in. In fact, half-life does not always refer to something going from n to zero, or zero up to n. Consider that the concept of the effect side equilibration half-life is relevant when adjusting a target-controlled infusion from 1 mic per mil to 5 mics per mil of propofol. To make matters more confusing, you will see many different types of half-life written about. There is the garden variety half-life, referring to a simple single compartment system, uh, denoted T subscript half. When working with a two compartment model, we may see that there is a distribution half-life, T half alpha, and an elimination half-life, T half beta. However, it's very com common for three compartment models to be used in anesthesia, and in that case, we see generally one of two naming systems. The first one is T half alpha, T half beta, T half gamma, where T half gamma is the terminal elimination half-life. The other one is T half alpha fast, T half alpha slow, and T half beta, where T half beta is the terminal elimination half-life. Most of what I have read employs the naming systems circled in red. When I was about 16, my parents bought a holiday home with a pool. My brother and sister and I thought this was great until we learned how frustrating it was to clean a pool. Raking leaves from the backyard during autumn is a similar experience. My opinion is that that frustration can be explained in terms of the time constant and the rate constant. Let's say it were possible for me to clean one tenth of the area of the pool in one minute. How long would it take me to clean the whole pool? We might be tempted to answer the question like this. There are 10 sections of the pool. I can clean one section per minute, so it will take me 10 minutes. However, that answer is not correct. And the reason it's not correct is because every time I clean that one tenth of the pool, 
all the remaining muck spreads out to fill the whole pool, including that section I had just cleaned. Only now, it is a little bit less concentrated. In this case, the rate constant is 0.1, meaning that the proportion of the pool that I can clean per unit time if I were to continue at the initial rate is 10%. The time constant is the reciprocal of the rate constant and therefore is 10 minutes. This makes sense based on the definitions of the time constant that we learned. The time constant is the amount of time it would take to finish cleaning the pool had the initial rate of cleaning continued. You might recall that exponential processes are said to be near completion after five half-lives or after three time constants. Therefore, it will take me three by 10, which is 30 minutes to finish cleaning this pool. For the record, that is not our pool. So just to review those definitions again, the rate constant is the proportion of the pool cleaned per unit time had the initial rate of change continued. The time constant is the time taken to clean the pool had the initial rate of cleaning continued. Let's examine that same idea using a washout curve. If we were to continue the initial rate of change, which is to follow the tangent at time zero, then we would complete the process in one time constant, which is 10 minutes. Time constant can also be defined as the amount of time taken for the amount of muck to fall from n to n divided by e. Let's review those definitions once more. Half-life is the time taken for an exponential process to reach 50% of completion. Time constant is the time taken for an exponential process to reach completion had the initial rate of change continued. Rate constant is the proportion of the process completed per unit time had the initial rate of change continued. Clearance is the volume of plasma which is depleted of drug per unit time. Volume of distribution is the volume into which a drug appears to disperse.